Okay, so this is my other prototype for some locomotion implementation types. Now, for this prototype, if you watched my previous video, uh, which probably have, it's, it was the Max MSP sequence. Um, so it was just sequencing heel-toe steps. Now, I've recreated some of the layers and switches involved in WISE with the added ability to start to switch different cloth types and different GAC types, different shoe types, uh, surface types, and texture types. And now how this is working is, and I think this is an interesting prototype method that I'm going to explore a little bit further uh, with different systems. What I've got set up is for the walk cycles, um, MIDI notes that represent either ant tags or a foot plant event, basically a reliable footstep event of some kind from the game. And then here is just a MIDI plotted on this MIDI graph. There is a parameter, or actually I should explain that these MIDI notes are using a control binding uh, that is assigned to step left uh, and step right, and then there's a separate event for running that sort of um, simulates the different state that running and sprinting usually is. And there is an, a, it requires an additional parameter, so this value, uh, similar to my max patch, it kind of um, it, it represents speed, so it goes from a slow walk. Uh, to a quick jog, and then running is a different state, and also the side that has a different sort of a pace to it, plus you add some scuff kind of sweeteners, um, and then walking backward switches again to using the same content but sequenced in a different way. So if it was walking backwards, it's toe heel rather than heel toe and then uh, they get closer together the faster uh, the character moves. So this value is also using a control binding um, parameter. You can see that this this parameter is actually updating that RTPC and Wise, which allows you to do all kinds of cool things as prototypes. It's kind of interesting to use a different tool, um, you think a little bit differently, and then from that, try and gauge what uh, it would require to re-implement this kind of a system in Frostbite. Uh, let's show some of how it behaves. So this, if I move down to the little walk, So if I, do, for example, I can get rid of the grit or the texture, and I can also have no cloth. And now, I mean, I can't drive this guy, it's just a captured video. Um, but, you know, it does allow me to Introduce the cloth again. Uh, introduce the gack. The heel toe is scaled again. Um, if I was to do something like a sidestep, that which would introduce some scuffing, um, I could play this. That's a bit loud. And similar to walk backwards, set this to walk backwards. Uh, really, I could automate this so it was always there uh, along this, but kind of want to drive it a little bit. So let me go to anyway, rough. Heel 
footsteps may be a bit hot. Well, you, you know, the footsteps are probably all, or all the foley's a bit hot. It's kind of the, the featured thing, um, but it would ideally probably be all mixed down quite a bit. Uh, if we move over to jogging, I go up to jog forwards, set it to the appropriate uh, little state here, and let's say, let's have some cloth. Um, I'll switch the surface, I'll just uh, I'll get a little bit of grit. Um, unfortunately, this window doesn't stay floating on top. Um, but when it disappears, you know, just use your ears. Kind of starts with a walk. And it loops. So let's change this to dirt. Step. And this is jogging, so actually grass doesn't really need a scuff. There if I move this little guy back to removing the scuff from the side. Nice to have that little bit of a scuff. It's probably too hot, but it's there to, to differentiate. Um, and backwards, similar deal. You get that scuff. Here, I'll turn it around when you move it up to it. Running is a different state. They're kind of one-shots. Actually, they are one-shots. Um, just more stompy. That's basically it. It was an interesting exercise. And again, I think it's a fun way to prototype and kind of think about how how you would want to do it. And, and looking back, I think I would have changed some of um, where things are switching because you, you, if you have to duplicate some work across some of these directions, it's like, hmm, maybe it should just get referenced some way rather than requiring some, some manual like duplication, even though it's not duplicating, it's, um, and with the, with the duplicating actually gives you a little bit more control because it allows you to change pitch a little bit across these different states as well. And I haven't done that too much, but it would be interesting to, you know, change up the amplitudes too. Like, for example, I didn't really change the volume between walking and jogging, but it would make sense that walking was quieter, jogging was louder. Um, and maybe the side to side, it was more pitch and they're all broken up and, uh, you know, referencing the same content and the same switch containers that are, that will allow you to, to dynamically switch and setting up these control change messages to simulate real time parameters is really an interesting, uh, little work method. Um, so I hope to do more little prototypes. Hopefully that was somewhat useful. Cheers. We'll see you in the next video.